we can't buy pork. We can't buy for... beef this good for that price. Right. <sighs> Dirty. All right, last quarter of beef. We are getting our last bit of hanging weight to see how much hanging weight we got out of this beef. Uh, looks like about 135. Uh, 135. Not that anybody right. can see that, but that's lift, what it said. Lift. Good morning, beautiful people. All right, we are not gonna make you watch another video of cutting up a leg of beef, but we do, in reality, have one quarter left. So this is our life. This is what actual, like, real home butchery looks like. It's what we're actually doing today. We're doing it ourselves, but we're gonna film a little bit fill in um, what we're doing today with the value added stuff. And then what we're gonna do is talk about our beef numbers. So I know a lot of people get super interested in what it takes to produce your own meat financially and, and what that looks like and how what you get out of it. it yeah, and how much meat we get. So we're gonna go over those numbers here in a little bit, but we kinda gotta wrap up some stuff and do some things first. So. First, you are continuing with your jerky jerky project that he started yesterday. So Corbin got the strips cut up and we got them marinating and they've been in the fridge overnight and we're gonna pop those onto these screens and get them in the dehydrator because that's gonna take a while. So that's like first business to get it, get it going. I'm going to be making a lot more beef jerky uh, with this last quarter. Good. Um, <laughs> like I did probably two or three pounds of jerky that's wet once it's dehydrated it's gonna be you know that much jerky mm -hmm. that's not gonna be enough for us yeah that's not gonna be enough jerky for us um i told corbin i was like yeah this is a nice amount of jerky for me and you <laughs> right right <laughs> but there's a lot of us so there, there's a lot more than just me and munchie so we uh we're gonna make more jerky yeah so i'm gonna get this stuff in the dehydrator and then as I get to it, we can cut more jerky and start marinating okay. that and we'll just we'll just get a cycle going. Cool, sounds good. All right, do you wanna explain what you did to this jerky? Um, so this is just meat cut up into strips. Uh, this is a spicy jerky. Oh, it smells so good. Take, <laughs> it does take smell a whiff of this. Oh, I smelled it yesterday. Oh my gosh, that smells amazing. So what'd you put in this uh, marinade? So this is soy sauce like actual fermented soy sauce, which is hard to find. Show you. Yeah. Show you. Show you sauce. I could show you. <laughs> it's fine. It's in the fridge. <laughs> so it's soy sauce, some sriracha, uh, some coconut aminos, garlic. Did you put brown sugar in there? I did. Okay. Did you put red pepper flakes? I put red pepper, okay. black pepper. Yeah. Um, it smells amazing. Like it really does smell amazing. Like this is going to be some hopefully, hopefully really, really, <laughs> really good. good. Jerky. Yeah. There's one tray. There's two trays. Alrighty, we're gonna get this set to 165. And we're just gonna let it go until it's dry and crispy. There we go. So like Meg said a minute ago, um, today we're gonna talk about a lot of the value added things that we're doing. I've still got some cutting to do, so there's still a little bit more to do. Uh, but for the most part, uh, we are to we're into the home stretch and that's when you get to you know you make your like yesterday we made our uh, liver burger for hamburgers um, yesterday Meg canned up some stewed beef it's just canned beef um, it is really nice to just you don't know what you're eating you know you've been out all day come in it's like hey I could like throw a can of beef in a frying pan and cook some rice and boom dinner this is fast food. Canned chicken is useful, canned beef, canned meat in general is extremely useful. It just, it comes through in a pinch. Um, other things like jerky. Jerky is kind of one of those things, uh, once upon a time, jerky was a staple for people, for survival. And now it's kind of an extra thing that you do if you, you know, want to go on a hike or whatever. A way to eat more of this cow is to preserve it. Jerky is preserved. So we're going to be making a lot more jerky. I, I will probably be turning a lot of the uh, top round and bottom round into jerky. Like I want to make a bunch. Uh, a few things that I haven't made yet is like I would like to cut some for like fajita meat, stuff like that. 
Um, all of the meat we've eaten off this cow so far has been very, very tender. So good. Yeah, I, I, so good. We are ecstatically happy. Very happy. Because we did have questions. It was like, well, it's a Jersey. It's not a beef breed. You know, I've, I've had people tell me, yeah, who wants to eat a Jersey? Or who wants to eat grass finish? Yeah, like, yeah, a lot of people. If there's no grain involved, then it's not tasty. Yeah, well, I disagree. <laughs> this is this is the way a cow is supposed to eat. They they were literally designed to make grass into muscle and fat. So I li I like it, you know, all natural. Yeah, it's been tasty, that's for sure. So you sat down and figured out the numbers. Now that we've weighed yes. each individual quarter, we've gotten weights on everything. Yeah. What are we sitting at? Okay, so live weight, he was. 1300 pounds that means right after the shot we picked him up we weighed him Best had, we didn't read didn't remove anything yes he was 1300 pounds and then we got him quartered he aged in the cooler for 10 to 14 days because we've been working on it for a couple yep. days um so hanging weight as of today is 604 pounds wow yeah and we are utilizing every bit of this now i will say that 604 pounds does not count the tongue and the meat we took off the head and the liver and the heart that we yeah. kept the tail you know the, the few things that we harvested yeah. day of it doesn't count that so there's a little bit extra there we could call it maybe 650 i mean by the time you add the the tail the tongue the cheek meat uh the liver, liver. like the liver's probably 10 pounds by itself yeah it probably was well and the call fat he did have the call fat, which yeah. actually the call fat was probably 20 pounds just by itself. Yeah, but the, the call fat was yeah. quite large. And I plan on rendering that. So between 604, which is the hanging weight, and 640, 650 probably is what we actually pulled off this animal. And we are going to utilize all of that. Mm -hmm. we, all, all of the bones that right. I am currently cutting out. Mm -hmm. All of the fat that I'm trimming off. Right. About the only thing we're not using is like tendons and... Right sinew and you know stuff like that yeah um the fat we're not really going to eat the fat per se there will be some fat we consume yeah but we're going to use the as much of it. the uh, suet right. as it's called mm -hmm. for stuff like right. um i'm getting me a rendered jar of that stuff so i can put it in the barn and use it to oil tool handles yeah because i really like how the suet might mix it with beeswax or something yeah. like that i really like how that suet works on wood handles right. so there's all sorts of stuff we can make candles we could make skin. yeah you talked the other day about making skincare right. items we are going to use as much of this animal as we can yeah uh, it, one of the benefits to doing it at home doing it yourself is it can be daunting but getting all of the animal mm -hmm. not just what the what the processor put in a bag for you I know that the uh, you know 75 80 pounds of fat that we have had off of this cow so far. The last time we got a cow processed, which was two and a half years ago, <laughs> yeah, they gave us only that little bit, that little yeah. bit of that little kidney fat. That was all they gave us, yeah. and it was a nearly. It was a little bit bigger. It was than a little bit bigger yeah. than this cow. So, and I realize a lot of people just want that kidney fat that inside fat and that's fine but we don't we want all of it we want all of it <laughs> so we're getting all of it there there is a reason we are doing this at home in our kitchen yeah. in our own space over a week it's uh it's kind of daunting um and it's a lot of work it really is a lot of work this is all i've worked on for a week yeah but we get all of our animal and we get to use all of our animal yeah All right, so a couple of days have gone by. All of that that you just watched was the end of last week. Uh, we finished up a lot of that stuff over the weekend. Yes. Uh, you have been busy canning broth and beef and dealing with the tallow. Right. Uh, yeah, there's 
we're down to all the like value added stuff. Yes. Like like the jerky. Jerky's right. a value added we're item. Pretty much done with the jerky now. So yeah. it's really just the rendering of the tallow and some last minute canning. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So now is the time for uh, let's talk numbers. All right. You saw a minute ago we got our totals on the hanging weight. Mm -hmm. um, we we've come up with our totals for the uh, the, whole the whole cow. What we put in the freezer. Um, as well as like cost, like what did this cow cost us over the two, almost two and a half years that we had this cow? Two. Two? Two, two years and two months, yeah. Two years and two months. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I did go back and weigh the tail and the call fat and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that added another 35 pounds to our total harvest. So overall, we harvested 639 pounds, because I know people are going to ask, that was 50 pounds of tallow, just from the body. And then we got another 19 and a half pounds of leaf fat. And then um, people always ask about the grind too. We got 113 and a half pounds of grind. That was our chili grind. We saved some like big chunks for chili grind, liver grind and regular grind all together. I just added that all up. So it was 113 pounds. We probably could have gotten more if we wanted, but we opted for more steaks and roasts and that kind of stuff. So. We, we can always grind it later. If yeah. we run out of grind, we can pull roasts and grind those. Right. So. I'm not going to go through the entire list, but um, people are always just really interested in what you pull. So we got short ribs, quite a few packs of short ribs, over eight packages of short ribs. So, and then we got ribeyes, skirt steaks, beef shanks. We saved the shanks and cut them into, you know, two inch portions. Um, we got two briskets, chuck roasts. Uh, you made some chuck eye steaks, mm -hmm. which we did have those, and those were pretty good. We got a neck tender, um, a neck roast roll, some New York strips, top round, filet mignon, um, sirloin roast, two tri tips, marrow bones. You saved the marrow mm -hmm. bones. Sirloin steaks, porterhouse steaks, T bone steaks, and bottom round roast. And then the canned beef. I wound up getting 16 jars of canned beef out mm -hmm. of it. And so all together, like we said, 639 pounds of total harvest. And then we added up our hay that we've purchased over the past two years. Yeah, this is this is when we, you know, past couple days we've been talking about this and figuring it out. I was actually surprised how little hay we actually fed. Because when I was feeding hay every couple days, it was like, oh my gosh, just, we're going to go broke feeding hay. So we only fed hay during the deep winter months when there was like no grass and our, we couldn't rotate anymore because mm -hmm. the grass wasn't growing. So probably into November, into like February yeah. is probably about the time period that we would feed hay. I subtracted the amount of time that he wasn't eating hay. So what we spent on hay over those two years minus, you know, six to eight months because he wasn't quite eating hay. He was still nursing yeah, for a while. Yeah, back when he was almost exclusively nursing. Yeah, and then we split that number in half because we had two cows mm -hmm. up until this summer and we haven't fed hay until just recently. Yeah. So we estimated that our total cost for hay for him was $1,075, which makes our cost per pound for what we harvested $1.68 <laughs> for grass fed, grass finished, really good beef. <laughs> uh, and I will say we've just about eaten beef every single day just about, yeah. since I started we, we cutting. We need a slower roll. Yeah, we gotta, gotta <laughs> slow down. Like the last, the last day I was cutting, which was Thursday, yeah. everybody ate steaks for lunch. We ate beef for dinner. Yeah. Like we've had beef every single day. We had burgers. We ate the liver, liver grind oh, burgers. So good. Very, very tasty. It's everything uh, I wanted. <laughs> the burgers don't taste livery. They just taste rich. Yeah, very rich. Um, and what I will say about eating a Jersey to anybody who's wondering, uh, this is the best beef I have ever had in my life. For real. Um, eaten plenty of Angus. Uh, in fact, the last cow that we bought from some friends uh, was an Angus. And man, this meat is so good. It's so good. Not um, that the last cow was bad. I mean, not, yeah, not that the last cow was bad. <laughs> this one's but really good. This one is just, I don't know. You know, what I've heard from a couple people, a couple friends, they're like, yeah, Jersey meat's supposed to be sweet. I, 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 I can see that. Yes. It's, uh, it's very sweet. It's very tasty. Yeah. So. We love it. Yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, now it's like, well, maybe we could, you know, a lot of times you can find Jersey steers for pretty cheap. So maybe, maybe that would be an option. They yeah. don't get as big as a beef breed, but it's okay. I mean, we trade got... tasty for size. Right. Exactly. We got 639 pounds. Yeah. So that's a bunch. Pretty good. We did 
figure out that we probably lost in trim about 40 to 50 pounds. So that's yeah. tenons. The new um, silver skin. Dirty, dirty fat on the right. outside, places where Hard we. Pellicle. Yeah, um, it just stuff that you gotta trim off because you don't wanna eat it. Right. Now, it didn't go to waste. I had enough trim to feed the chickens exclusively for. I probably got. We have two separate flocks of chickens, and they both got trim from that cow for about three days. Yeah, so that saved us money there. Yeah. For not having to feed the chickens grain, grain, yeah, from our feed, so that was a win-win too. It yeah. didn't go to waste, and we saved a little bit of money there, yeah. so that was awesome. So we are super, super happy with this. What we put away, what we got, and what it cost us. I mean, that was we can't we can't buy beef we can't buy for, beef this good for that price. Right there we go. That's our numbers uh, for everybody who's wondering what it costs and what we got out of it. So. Happy. It's very excited. We are we are very happy. Uh, we feel very blessed to have our freezers full. Yeah. I am also very happy to not have to uh, be cut up cut, cut, <laughs> cutting up a cow. That was a long process. It was a long process. Way you know, longer than a pig. I could have I could have worked into the wee hours of the night every day, but it was just like you know what I'm just gonna cut during business hours. You know. Yeah. Uh, basically, after breakfast I would start and then until dinner until dinner time and then shut down and we'd eat dinner. So yeah. it worked out. I didn't burn out. Uh, it was just. It Slow was good. Steady. It took us five days. Four or five, yeah. It was it was a push, but it was worth it. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next time I get to do a cow in our kitchen. Yeah, that'll be cool. Alrighty, I guess that that's it. it. Yeah. All right, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.